America, I started the Funky Academic last year because I figured that there were a lot of obstacles that kept stigmatized minorities, especially black students, from studying philosophy. And with the catalog of videos I've put together, I think I've done decent work in starting to redress this infelicity. But I'm a good American, and that means it's time to scale up. Expand the staff and programming, and to do that, I need to run a capital campaign. This is that capital campaign. It'll be composed of two videos. This video targets academics, so I'm going to need you to send this video along on your Facebook feed or Twitter or send it on your department listserv by following the YouTube link. First, let's run some numbers. A recent study shows that 35% of students go to college for career aspirations. That is, they go for the money that they think they're going to get into the future. 25% go for the credential. They like the status of having a college degree because it turns out that we treat people differently depending on the quality of their college degree. Uh, another 23% go for collegiality. It's what their friends are doing and the people they want to be their friends, it's what they're doing. 10% go because they haven't thought to imagine an alternative. And this leaves 5% who go to college to study knowledge for knowledge's sake. I suspect that liberal arts students and professors in general, and philosophy professors in particular, are overrepresented by people in that 5%. I also suspect that the demographic of people with the luxury of chasing knowledge for knowledge's sake are white. And knowledge for knowledge's sake has always sounded like a fetish to me. Whereas I seek knowledge in order to reason towards redressing some sort of political, economic, social, or psychologically induced pain, and I do it through philosophy because I want to reason toward this redress in a reliable way, I pursue philosophy, seeking knowledge, and studying the constitutive elements of knowledge, not out of some knowledge fetish, but to help me turn information into wisdom in regard to writing injustices. Now, it's been my experience that teachers from this 5%, the knowledge for knowledge is sake crowd, tend to teach to this 5%, leaving the rest of the 95% of the class alienated from both the teachers and the material taught. Now this causes problems, not the least of which is that when the 95% get angry and they want their tax money back or start resenting their loans, liberal arts professors and institutions may find out that the university faculty club is not a defensible position. So I started The Funky Academic because I wanted to make the case for the liberal arts as an education for freedom. Now I argue that people who care about freedom should study liberal arts because if they don't, the world as it stands shunts people into reproducing or laboring under conditions of unfreedom. I wanted to teach people about freedom while also teaching them about political power in a way that helps them fashion a world where freedom is at home. So I made these videos, one on justice, one on neoliberalism, one on structural injustice, etc. And it's been a year and now it's time to scale up, get better equipment, raise production values. I'd like to hire an assistant editor and I'd also like to attend more professional conferences, for example, APA and also AAR and APSA. I want to be able to do funky recapitulations of the various conferences. Most importantly, I'd like to interview PhD students from stigmatized and marginalized communities and talk to them about their research interests. And just as importantly, I'd like to pay them for their time for sitting down and doing the interview. Apparently, academic departments in the humanities and even the social sciences are serious about including more students from stigmatized populations. And they are markedly horrible about sharing power with students and faculty from stigmatized populations. Which is especially unfortunate because American academia has accrued an incredible amount of wealth off of black people. There's this great story about how Georgetown sold 300 slaves in the 19th century in order to stay afloat. It would be worth about 3.3 million in today's dollars. But you have to appreciate how compound interest works. So in 1838, the slaves were sold for approximately $115,000. Now if that money were put into a fund that accrued annually at a reasonable 6% interest rate, it would be worth $2.9 billion in 2016. And that doesn't even take into account the initial interest or punitive damages. The general point is that U.S. universities have endowments compounded through slavery and property holdings eased by Jim Crow. And black people have generational poverty and abysmal home ownership rates by dint of these same institutions. As universities gobble up property, they have gotten incredibly wealthy off of black failure. And if you're teaching philosophy in the U.S., you aren't really even teaching black kids. You don't have the emails in your inbox every day from black people asking about how they can start learning philosophy. You know who does? I do. 
Because of the funky academic videos, I have black people every day asking me to get them into philosophy. So for multiple reasons, you academic philosophers should figure out a way to keep me going and help me scale this up. And I'm going to give you three ways. First, you can go to www.thefunkyacademic.com and sign up to be a member. Second, for $2,500, you get to sponsor an episode. At the beginning of the episode, for example, on epistemic closure, I'll say something nice and informational, like, this episode was brought to you by Athena in Action. Athena in Action is a networking and mentorship workshop for graduate student women in philosophy. It brings together graduate students with a group of women faculty members for three days of substantive philosophical discussion and professional advice. Participants benefit from getting to know other talented female graduate students and the women faculty members. It's an excellent program. Track down Athena in Action or find Professor Elizabeth Camp, Professor Elizabeth Harmon, and Professor Jill North for more information. So that's what your department gets for $2,500. A quick commercial in front of a video on some other philosophical topic. By the way, Athena in Action, that one's on the house. Keep up the good work. For $5,000, I'll fly out to your department, record interviews with a few of your faculty on their research interests, and put together a special 10-minute episode of The Funky Academic that's just on your department. It'll be a great artifact for your department to have. Not only will I promote it on my website, you'll be released to use the video as you see fit. If you're a scholar and you want the funky academic to grow and these arguments for the humanities to be made, then you have three options. Go to the website and sign up, find $2,500 to sponsor an episode, or find $5,000 to have an episode filmed on your department. Hey, look, if you're a compliment department trying to boost enrollment or poach students from the English department, this third option is a good strategy to do that. Because if you're an endowed professor anywhere in America, you are endowed with compounded slave money. And now I'm talking to my people, philosophy professors. Let's not pretend that you've worked off that debt to the non-white community. So, academic community, I thank you in advance for organizing with your department, looking at your department's budget, taking the stewardship of your discipline seriously, and redressing some of the material and felicities that have made your department possible in these United States. And or talking with your dean and finding money on a diversity budget. Now if your dean doesn't play along, feel free to pass along the hat among the endowed professors in your next meeting. Now, I know that there are a lot of professors who are supposedly broke, but can somehow find the money to send their kids to private school or spend more for a house in a non-black neighborhood, all to avoid having to deal with the masses of black people. So if your department doesn't have money in your marketing budget and the dean doesn't have enough in the division budget for these diversity initiatives, I think you should organize privately and put some of their white flight money together to come up with the $5,000 to sponsor your department. And I'll spend an entire episode showcasing your department in an attractive manner that's not necessarily calibrated for a white audience. And it would show the world that you're the kind of department that would support the quality of videos that I've been producing for the last year. So thank you for finding a way to support these efforts at The Funky Academic and partnering to create the next generation of thinkers and liberal artists. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send me an email at irami at thefunkyacademic.com. That's I-R-A-M-I at thefunkyacademic.com. Look forward to working with you. Peace. Yeah,